Think you know the rules of tennis pretty well? well? Let's see if you know the answer to these five rules questions. Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna test your knowledge on five tennis situations and rules. And make sure you stick around to the last one, because it's a situation that happens more often than you think, and in my experience, rarely do all the players agree on the call. All right, question number one. You're playing singles, this is you, you're returning serve, and your opponent lines up to serve standing here. Is that allowed? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Your answer is no. That is not allowed. You are not allowed to stand to the outside of the court you're playing on. And just to be clear, I'm talking about when you're serving. Since I said you were playing singles, the singles line is extended like that. Your opponent and you, when serving, you must stand between the extension of the singles line and the extension of the center mark. So to play singles, you can stand anywhere in here. When you're playing doubles, that's when you're allowed to stand here. Now you can stand anywhere in that area, but you just have to stand behind the baseline of the court you're playing on. If you're playing singles, you have to stand behind the singles baseline. When playing doubles, you can stand anywhere from here all the way out to here. So don't let your opponent stand farther out than the singles line if you're playing singles because then it gives them an unfair advantage on the serve and it gives them a crazy angle. So make sure that you and your opponents are abiding by that rule. Now the second situation is, and this is for singles or doubles, but I just happen to put up doubles. You're serving and you hit your serve but your serve goes nowhere near the box and you end up hitting the returner in the air. It could hit their body or their racket. It doesn't matter. What's the call? <laughs> what is the call? You hit the returner in the air. The ball is nowhere close to landing in the box. Do you know the rule? You win the point automatically. In the rules of tennis, your serve must bounce. Otherwise, how, how do you know if it's in or out? You can't call a ball in or out until it actually bounces. So the returning team must allow your serve to bounce before they can ever hit it, call it out, whatever. Even if it's your fault, it's kind of a crazy rule. In fact, it gets even crazier. If you hit the partner in the air, and that, this has to be in the air, not off the bounce, and then it hits them. If you hit the partner in the air, you hit him in the shoulder, you hit him in the knee, you hit it right at them and they block it. That happened at Wimbledon. I'm gonna put the link in the description below of a, a point at Wimbledon and the player at Wimbledon didn't, didn't, did not even know the rule. But if you hit either player in the air, and if singles, it's just the returner. If you hit either player in the air, whether it's their fault or your fault, hits their racket or hits their body, it's the serving team's point automatically. Now the third situation is you and your opponent are rallying back and forth and you happen to hit the tape. So you get a let cord and the ball barely dribbles over the net and this could be any scenario but I'm just using this one. Your opponent is running forward and you swear that ball bounced a second time before they got that ball back on your side and you stop playing and you say, hey, that ball bounced twice. Your opponent said, no it didn't. I got it on one bounce. Who's right? Do you know? Do you know whose call it is? You are not allowed to, I mean, I guess you can call a double bounce on your opponent, but it doesn't matter because it's their job to say whether it was a double bounce or not. But it is fair because it works both ways. If you're the person running forward because your opponent dribbles a ball off the net and you get to it and you swear you got it on one bounce, your opponent is not allowed to call a double bounce on you. So. Only you can call a double bounce on yourself. And you get that ball over the net, they stop playing, guess what? You just won the point. Don't let anybody call a double bounce on you, but realize you cannot call a double bounce on your opponent. The person who hit the ball is the one who makes the determination whether the ball bounced once or twice. All right, so the fourth question. You're rallying back and forth with your opponent and they hit the ball super high and super short. 
and you run forward, your momentum's carrying you forward, you hit the ball over the net, and after hitting the ball, you run into the net. You touch it with your hand or your racket or your foot. What's the call? Yeah, you figured, <laughs> you figured it out. You automatically lose the point and you have to call it on yourself. This is really common at the beginner level where players are at the net and they get an overhead and they hit an overhead, but they end up with their racket after hitting the ball, their follow through smacks the top of the racket. If you feel yourself touch the net with your racket, your foot, your hand, if at any time during the point you touch the net, you must immediately stop the point and award your opponent the point. All right, this last one I am super excited about. This happens more than you think. This is you, you hit the ball, and whether you hit the frame, or maybe there's a lot of wind, or you just hit a lot of backspin on it, the ball goes over the net, lands on the opponent's side of the court, and then comes back on your side. Your opponent never touched the ball. You hit it over, and the ball comes back onto your side. This is actually very common in doubles. You'll see players, let me put out the doubles players. You'll see players with overheads and the overheader frames the ball and actually hits the very top tip of the racket and the ball has a ton of backspin. So you'll see, you know, the server lobs and the returner's partner has an overhead, tips it off the top of their racket, ball has a ton of slice, a ton of backspin, it barely goes over the net and then comes back over the net. That team never hit the ball. Who wins the point? The overheader wins the point. This, is, this usually, <laughs> you get a lot of people arguing this um, when this happens. So in the rules of tennis, the ball, once it bounces a second time, the ball is over, the point is over. So there's no rule on where the second bounce has to be. It's not like the second bounce has to be in the court, right? Otherwise you wouldn't get an ace on TV. You see people, they serve and they, the ball bounces one time and then it hits the back fence on one bounce. Like the second bounce was out of play. So the rule of the second bounce is the second bounce can be anywhere. The first bounce has to be within the court. And the second bounce can actually be on your own side. So if you hit the ball over the net and then the ball comes back on your side, you win the point automatically. Just don't touch it until it bounces the second time. Don't hit it over the net and then it bounces and you see it coming back over and then before it bounces the second time, hit it again. That's, that's a double hit basically and you just lost the point. Allow it to bounce a second time and yes, it'll be back on your side. But since they never hit the ball, they didn't get credit for the shot that went over the net and you win. Now there is a little wrinkle to this, to this that is very, very cool. So we'll make this kind of the sixth question. Let's say the situation was reversed. Your opponent did this. Your opponent tipped the ball off the top of their racket, it bounces, and now it begins going back over the net and it is currently on their side. Question for you. Are you allowed to reach over the net, which typically you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to reach over the net to touch the ball. With this person, after the ball goes over the net and then goes back because of the backspin, would this person be allowed to get nice and tight to the net, not touch the net, as we learned, can't touch the net. Would they be allowed to get tight to the net, not touching it, and reach over to make contact with the ball? Do you know the answer? <laughs> yes, they would be. That is the only time you're allowed to reach over the net to hit the ball because the ball already came onto your side. You didn't hit the ball before it came onto your side. You're hitting after it came onto your side. It just now happens to be back on theirs. That is when you're allowed to hit the ball uh, while reaching over the net. Just do not touch the net. Another thing, just be sure that when you hit the ball, hit it down back into their side of the net and you automatically win the point. That, I, I'm gonna get some comments on this one. Reach over the net, so the ball comes onto your side, it bounces back over, reach over 
and hit the ball like this and hit it into the net and just let it dribble, you just automatically won the point. You, because how is that any different than hitting a let? You, a let, think about when you hit a let and the people go, oh, sorry. You hit the net and it dribbles onto their side. You hit the net and it dribbles onto their side. <laughs> I can't wait to, to read the comments on that. But that's the only time you're allowed to reach over. And when you reach over, just tap it back on, into their side of the net and just let it roll and you just won the point. I hope you did really well in this quiz. This, this was super fun. This was actually an idea I got from all of the questions I've been getting from the Friday Q&A. Uh, and I just didn't want to wait <laughs> until Friday to make this video. Um, now, if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, throw it in the comments below. Um, and I might just include it in an upcoming Friday Q&A uh, um, video, which isn't this. <laughs> Today is Tuesday. Um, but I just, it kind of uh, got, gave me the thought to make a video like this. So make sure you know these rules because these rules are broken every match. I swear there's a double bounce and there's an argument or somebody touches the net and there's an argument or someone's standing way over here and you're playing singles and all of a sudden there's an argument. You got to know the rules of the sport you play and when you do there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2minutetennis.net. You got this.